Hey guys, this is Mr. Grace for Algebra 1, Chapter 8.1 Notes. Today we're going to be talking about the product and quotient properties of powers. Our learning target today is to be able to apply the product and quotient properties of simple expressions involving powers. Are you guys ready to get started? Okay, so to start this off, we do have a lot of vocabulary. But we're going to be looking at this example, okay? 3x to the 4th. So go ahead and write that down. 3x to the 4th. Now, the first word we're going to look at is the word coefficient. Coefficient is a number multiplied in front of the variable. Okay, so in this example, the 3 is the coefficient because it is the number in front of the variable. Now, our next word, base. The base is a number or variable that has an exponent. Okay, in this example, the x is the base because it has the exponent that's attached to it. Okay, next word is exponent. Exponent, it's the small number, and it tells us how many times to multiply the base with itself. Okay, so 4 is the exponent. Now, finally, a power is a base and its exponent. So, all together, this whole thing, that's called the power. Okay, and then finally, our last word is expanded form of a power, and that's writing a power with uh, with the multiplication, so writing it out the long way. So we're going to get started with that in just a second. So if you need to pause the video to get the rest of those vocabulary words down, go ahead and do so. All right, so let's talk about an example of exponential form, okay? With exponential form, remember that it has exponents. Okay, so my example is going to be 3 squared x to the fourth. See how that has exponents? Now in expanded form, when we would write everything out, we would write that 3 times 3 times x times x times x times x. Because I'm looking at exponent is 2, and that's why we have two 3's. Our exponent is 4, and that's why we have four x's. Okay, so the product of prop, uh, powers property is if powers with the same base are multiplied together, the base stays the same, but you must add the exponents, okay? And here's why. Let's say that we have x squared times x to the third. If we were to write that out in expanded form, there would be x times x times x times x times x. So what that is right there, that's the expanded form. We really don't want to have to write that out every single time, okay? But how many x's do we have there? You have five, okay? So that right there is the same as x squared plus x. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's rewrite that x, and that's 2 plus 3. 
So do you see if we just take those exponents, add them up? That's where we get x to the fifth. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these examples. Uh, now, some of them you will need to multiply them out. So if you have a calculator handy, that might be helpful. Okay, so 5 to the third times 5 squared. Okay, we have the same base. So we add the exponents, and that gives us 5 to the fifth. Okay, now on your calculator, you should go 5 to the fifth power. And that gives us an answer of 3,125. Okay, now let's look at the next one. Now, we can combine our y, or our w's, I'm sorry, because those are the same, and we have w to the seventh. But what about our x's? How many x's do we have? Well, we have a total of 10, so x to the 10th. And that would be our final answer. Okay, so number three, let's find the guys that are the same, okay? 2 cubed and 2 squared gives us a total of 2 to the fifth. And our a's right here, a to the 15th. Okay, now we can actually simplify that because we can do 2 to the fifth power. We can find out what that number is, and that number is 32. Okay, so we have 32. But the a to the 15th, that stays the same. Okay. Negative 4 times negative 4 squared. Now, we need to be careful, because how many negative 4s do we have right there? We've got 1. So we have a total of 3. Okay. Now, when you're typing that into the calculator, I would type it in exactly as you see it. Okay? And it gives us negative 64. All right, number five. Now, just remember that we have one of each of those three, so that's going to actually give us three squared x. How many x's do we have? Well, 4 and 7 give us 11. Hopefully you do not need a calculator for 3 squared because that's 3 times 3 which is 9x to the 11. Okay. Now let's look at the next one. Now this is saying negative 3 and 7. Those aren't the same. Okay, so there's no exponents that we're combining, but negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. Okay, so now let's look at the x's. How many x's do you have all together? We should have 2. And then the y's is y to the 5 and 8 is... 13. So you get negative 21 x squared y to the 13th. Alright, why don't you guys try number 7, 8, and 9 see how you do. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, let's start taking a look at this. Now for number 7, make sure to add up all of your w's and all of your x's. Okay, and that's where you get w to the 14th, x to the 6th. Now, for number 8, if you left it like this, remember that when we have numbers, I want to know exactly what number they're talking about. So type it in exactly as you see it, and you'll get your answer. Okay? And with problem number 9, you can actually simplify this negative 2 times 2 to the third power is 8. 
and then negative 2 times 8, you should be able to do that in your head, and you get negative 16. Okay. All right, let's flip it over. The quotient of powers property. So if powers with the same base are being divided, the base stays the same, but you must subtract the exponents, okay? And that's the big minus the small, okay? So here's why. Say if we have x to the third over x to the fifth. If we were to write that out in expanded form, so x times x times x, that's the top, and we have 5 on the bottom, well, those cancel out, those cancel out, and those cancel out. So we're left to x squared on the bottom, and then you put a 1 on the top. Okay, so just remember that the answer goes where the exponent was greater, the numerator or the denominator. Okay, so if we're doing what we said, the big minus the small, that's x5 minus 3 equals x squared, and that is on the bottom. Okay? Now, we don't want you to write out the expanded form. We don't want you to have to do this part every single time. That's why we've got this rule. Okay? So, x to the 8 over x to the 4. So, let's, the directions say simplify each expression by using the product and quotient property. If the base is a number and not a variable, give the final answer. Divide it out, okay? So, number one, x to the eighth over x to the fourth. Who wins, the top or the bottom? Uh, the top wins, and the top wins by four. So that's your answer, x to the fourth. This makes it look like a nice x. Okay. Now on two, who wins, the top or the bottom? Okay. This time the bottom wins, and the bottom wins by four, but you gotta have a number up on the top, okay? All right, for number three, who wins, the top or the bottom? Okay, the bottom wins, and the bottom wins by two, but they're saying divide this out, or multiply it out. We can figure this out, because seven squared is, 49, and then the 1 stays up top. Okay, for number 2, number 2, number 4, we've got two things going on. We got the y's and the x's, okay? Looking at the w's first, who wins, the top or the bottom? Okay, well, the top wins, and the top wins by 3. Now what about the x's? Well, the bottom wins, and the bottom wins by 5. Okay, so for problem number 5, we actually have to combine things first. See how we got all of those m's on the top? Well, let's simplify that out. m to the 9th, y to the 10th, m to the 12th, y to the third. Okay. So now let's look at your m's. Who wins, the top or the bottom? Hopefully you're saying, Mr. Geist, well, the bottom wins. Okay. And the bottom wins by three. Okay. Now looking at your y's, who wins, the top or the bottom? The top wins. And the top wins by seven. So you get y to the 7th, m to the 3rd. Okay? Alright. Number 6. 
let's take a look. First, things are kind of mixed up together. So let's look at the X's. Who wins for the X's, the top or the bottom? Okay. The top wins, and the top wins by one. Okay. So now let's look at the W's. Who wins for the W's, the top or the bottom? Okay, the bottom wins, and the bottom wins by four. Okay, now the Y's. Who wins, the top or the bottom? Well, the bottom wins, and the bottom wins by two. So all we're really doing is kind of combining things when we need to, and then finding out who wins, the top or the bottom. Okay? Now, problem number seven. First, we've got the X or the twos to worry about. So who wins with the twos, the top or the bottom? Okay, the top wins by one, so there's just one two. Okay, but now let's combine those X's. We get X to the ninth, and on the bottom, we get X to the tenth. So now who wins, the top or the bottom? The bottom wins, and the bottom wins by one. Okay, and you don't need to have that one there. If it's just the X by itself, we can figure that out. Okay? When you've got a problem like this, all you're going to do is divide, okay? Divide that out or reduce the fraction, okay? So 7 over 24 is the same thing as 1 fourth, okay? So now let's start looking. We've got our x's. Who wins, the top or the bottom? The top wins, and the top wins by one. Let's look at the W's. Okay, who wins, the top or the bottom? The top wins, and the top wins by, was that nine? And then let's look at the Y's. Who wins, the top or the bottom? The bottom wins, and the bottom wins by seven. All right, number nine, why don't you pause the video and see if you can do it all by yourself. Okay, and there you go. Okay. So 12 divided by negative 3 gives you negative 4. The A's win on the bottom. And then both the B's and the C's win on top. OK? Now, you have the independent practice on the bottom. That's going to be your homework. If you have any questions, please come see Ms. Carranza or myself. Otherwise, that's it for Algebra 1, Chapter 8.1. Notes, product and quotient property of powers. Thanks for watching, guys.